I'm here with designer Molly Shaler, and today we're talking about taking elements outside the box and using them in different ways. And Molly, this is beautiful. Thank you. You're I, welcome. I love this necklace and how you've used the sliders. Thanks. I decided to do something a little different this time and use the sliders um, almost in a pendant drop way. But in order to balance that out design-wise, I had to make these little graduated dangles that almost read as little like half pyramids all the way around the necklace. Right. It gives it a really symmetrical feel. Mm -hmm. And this is a statement. You're making a statement with this piece here. Definitely. Right. So how do we get started with those dangle sections? Well, what you do is usually I'll grab um, a few strands of beads that I think kind of coordinate pretty well together. And um, I'll kind of create, usually I'll go with the one, two, three, two, one on head pins. And I lay them out first to make sure that I like the way they fit together. Bicones in general work really well on the ends and they kind of pocket themselves inside of the rounds or other bicones. So those are good shapes to use when you're making this kind of graduated look. And you're just going to make simple loops. You're going to do that. I usually trim right after I bend. And try to hold on to the end there. And just make a simple loop as you go around. With your round nose pliers. Mm -hmm. With your round nose pliers. And basic loops are the quick and easy one. They are. You just have to make sure that they, they really touch on this because the wire is pretty thin onto which you're stringing it. So make sure it's very closed. Yep. And so once you've got your dangles made. And I go ahead and I make all the dangles at once for the entire necklace because it's easier to kind of do that one thing at, at once. Sure. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the stringing because once you have the dangles made, really all this is is stringing. And um, let's go ahead and I'll show you how I crimp. Everybody does that. Yeah, the three, the two-step process on crimping or three-step. And we should mention your beading wire using 19 strand because mm -hmm. it has good flexibility. Yeah, I like this one. It's um, it's strong enough, but it's flexible because there is the drape's pretty important in this necklace. Yes, it does make a really nice drape. And when um, when I'm doing this, I decided to go ahead and with my clasp, I've already got the jump rings on it, and I'm just going to attach to the jump rings that are already attached to the clasp. So that makes it nice in case you want to switch out your clasp later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to cut the wire again or recrimp. So I went ahead and I'm going to pull this. I usually like to pull it relatively tight, but I don't like to push it all the way up to the yeah, jumping. Yeah, it can make things go a little funky there at the end. And of course, the important thing is to not let those wires go where they want to go. You don't want them to cross or else your crimp won't be secure. I do the outside, I do a three. You do the three, three step. step. Yeah. Make it an oval. The outside. Then crease it on the inside. Yeah. And I found the thing that I think people have problems with sometimes with crimping is they crimp the second step too hard. Yes. And it's it really squishes gentle, the sides. Gentle motion there. And then you can fold it in half. And I like to kind of go up and down just to make sure that it's a nice secure. Nice and I always secure. test it. So then all you have left to do is your stringing. And um, these components are really nice and they are meant to have two strands going through them, but you don't have to use them that way. So these have um, really great channels on the backs, doubles, double loops on each side to use. And when I'm starting my necklace, usually I'll start with a smaller group of dangles like these three so that you cut a little bit less on the back. in the back anyway. Yeah. Keep it comfortable. I'm sorry, reach across here. Oh, and that's okay. I'm gonna start with this small one, and I'll just string along here until I get to the part where I want to put the dangles on. So you start establishing your pattern, and we'll have the complete instructions for this on the website too. To so get going, let's see. I'm about ready for bicone, and then I can put on a couple of my dangles, and I'll just do one set, the small set of dangles, and then. So also, you're stringing a bead in between each of these, mm -hmm. right? So that's helping them lay in that triangular pattern. It is, and you have to find the right size. If it's the bead's too big, then they don't read as kind of one unit. But if the bead's too small, they they ruffle. But the other part of this necklace that does take a little bit of construction is the pendant. Now this pendant right the, on the first necklace I showed you um, came as a pendant on a card. But I thought that to go with these brighter gold components, it'd be nice to use these, um, this one with brighter gold stones. Sure, you want it, and because you're using that bright, and this is mm -hmm. a slider too, right? It is. So it's giving you another use for a slider yeah. as you can just create the pendant. So instead of using the loops on the back, I went ahead and I decided to just use this coordinating bead 
slide it on here and make a simple loop. Although one, the side that I'm putting around this um, little heart shape is a little bit larger loop so that it's, it'll be able to dangle freely instead of getting sure. stuck on the sides. Make a regular loop. I got cut that guy a little bit big, but that's what I needed. Make a loop and then you can just attach it yeah. to the heart shape like that. Great, so that makes your pendant. And then when you're, so once you have your pattern, then you have your graduated dangles and then a slider, then you yeah. just repeat until you get to the center of the necklace. Mm -hmm. And then you can string your pendant, pendant and do the same thing on all the way around to the other all side. All right, well let's take a look at your piece again. This is beautiful and I love the color palette that you chose, really nice and monochromatic, mm -hmm. but giving you another use there for the sliders is really smart. Thank you. And tell us about the gray one. Um, this one is interesting too in that it uses actually three different types of sliders. One slider is this graduated gray slider here. This is kind of a lightning bolt little slider. And then um, this piece here and also the pendant down at the bottom are created of multiple sliders um, wired together just using head pins. So I'd put a head pin through the channels and so it creates a rigid um, plate almost that I used as a pendant there and then here it's the the loop of the kind of like the ring part of a toggle clasp almost oh, yeah. it kind of goes through there. Clever well let's take a quick look at your turquoise necklace too you have some dangles and mm -hmm. again with the sliders and this is instead of making your graduated pins you could yep. use a drop. These are some great ideas thank you so much You're Molly. Welcome. We will be right back with Jean Campbell.